What's up guys, Hulky Boy here. So Windows 10 has rolled out on the 29th of July and we're 12 days into August, so nearly two weeks since Windows 10. Windows 10 has been available to the public. And I've had a few people message me, drop comments, asking me, oh, am I gonna upgrade the, the Alienware I've got to uh, Windows 10? And the answer, quite frankly, at the moment is no. And here's why I think you should avoid Windows 10. Um, basically, I work in IT and we do like repairs for customers and bits and pieces like that. And I've had multiple laptops, PCs coming into the, into our shop with issues for, since they've been upgraded to Windows 10. Bear in mind, it's only been about a week or so. I've had various issues from literally computers completely crashing and blue screening and freezing up since they've gone up to Windows 10. No other hardware changes. They've literally upgraded and a couple of days into it, they've had multiple freezing and crashing. They've had to keep rebooting it and turning it off. And they've come in in a panic wanting to downgrade back to Windows 7 or Windows 8 or whatever it is they had before. I've also had various issues with drivers. I mean, certain drivers are not compatible on Windows 10, even though they upgrade when they're on 8 and 7. So you wouldn't think it makes much of a difference. But I've had uh, AMD drivers for graphics and stuff. So when people are playing on like Minecraft and basic sort of games like that, they're literally not responding, kicking them out of the game, it crashes, and then you get AMD unresponsive, etc, etc. Please download and install a new driver. Um, as you can imagine, a lot of the websites don't have drivers for them, and if they do, they're quite buggy and patchy, and they don't really work, so that's one of the main issues I would say. And these are middle-of-the-road laptops that you pick up from your, your basic hardware stores, like PC World Curries, you know, Whatever it is you guys, when you go to a shop and you purchase like laptops off the shelf, not custom built spec stuff like Dell, anywhere, etc. So that is my main concern. If you're getting these sorts of issues on your basic middle of the road PCs, anything like what I've got, Alienware's or MSI's, anything that's going to be like high spec and very bespoke drivers and software, I imagine you're going to have exactly the same issues, if not 10 times worse, because it's going to be even harder to find and obtain drivers. And as you know from my previous videos, they're a nightmare to get for Nvidia and other bits and pieces. So I could just see me upgrading to Windows 10 and completely ma mangling my laptop, which I don't really want to do, even if it is just to get some views because I do need it for work. So that is one of the main reasons why I am uh, not going to be upgrading, not yet anyway. I'd uh, leave it for quite a while until uh, everyone else sorts out all the issues. Secondly, it's free for 12 months, and I think the reason that they've made it free for 12 months, I and mean, they say, oh, they want to get everyone on the same platform, I think it's basic is you're going to be guinea pigs. You're basically going to download their new software, and all the issues you're going to report, like this isn't working, that isn't working, so they can fix all the bugs, and then they can start charging everybody else to upgrade to it. That's my two cents, and that makes sense to me. The reason they're making it free is that basically you can just test run it, and then after the 12 months is up, hopefully they've ironed most of the wrinkles out on the OS, and then they're going to sting you for it and start charging you for whack. $199 for Windows 10 Professional is, is like the jumping off points from what a few websites have said. So if you are stupid enough to upgrade to Windows 10, there is something you can do inside your, I think it's in your settings, your control panel, there is an option to downgrade back to whatever you had before, Windows 7 or 8 or 8.1, depending on what you had. So you can't go back from 10 to 8 if you're on 7, etc. you need to go back to what you had previously. Uh, you need to do that within one month of upgrading, otherwise the option disappears forever and you're stuck. Unless you're tech savvy and can reinstall and do your own bits and pieces, you're going to come across, you know, various problems. You may be lucky, I mean, like I said, if you're going to be using it for basic web searching, browsing, eBay, possibly YouTube, I wouldn't go as far as gaming, maybe light gaming, you're probably not going to notice too much wrong with it, no issues, you know, all great, but for me, and many of the users that watch this channel, they're going to be using it for gaming and, and more intense stuff. So I would advise to hold off, if not altogether, for Windows 10 for the time being. Um, the annoying little fucking Windows 10 box that keeps popping up on your, on your taskbar, you can get rid of that. I'll put a link in the description to an article that I read about it, and you can remove it. You have to go into your installed updates and uh, remove Windows KB3035583. I'll chuck an annotation up there so you know which one it is. You uninstall that and it should remove the blue box, which is it, it irritates the life out of me. So, yeah, it must be affecting other people. Um, if you are going to go up to 10, I mean, some of the features... If you've had a look, you'll notice that the, the start bar is back. You know, I know they did kind of reintroduce it in 8.1. 8 wasn't there. You can download hot fixes to get it back on, which is what I've done on my alien where I've got 8 and 8.1, I think, and I'll put a uh, Windows 7 start menu back onto it because I prefer that. 
but they've brought it back as default for Windows 10 and what you've got, you've got your standard start menu, it's a bit jazzed up, a bit different and you've got your tiles that you'd have on Windows 8 to the to the side of it so you kind of got the, the tile panel and the start menu kind of combined into one. Uh, they've got is it Cortana, they've got their own, I think it's Microsoft's own take on Siri for Apple, it's like a personal assistant where it can, I imagine it's more for tablets and phones and stuff than it is the PC where you can voice commands and stuff like that and it'll write things down in your diary and all that pointless stuff with the iPhones and that so I've been doing it for quite a while. Uh, the browser has changed, it's Microsoft Edge. I haven't looked too much into it, but it's got like, um, it's supposed to be their best browser yet, which doesn't really say much because a few of their other ones have been awful. Um, but you can use your stylus and, and the touch screens and stuff, and you can annotate websites, which sounds pretty cool, so that'll be worth trying out, especially on a touch screen laptop. So, but no, I'm not, I'm not gonna upgrade anytime soon. Um, basically, yeah, end of the day, I would advise not upgrading, especially in this early time. Um, like I said, a lot of middle of the road laptops are getting issues with it already. So anyone who's got a high spec gaming laptop or anything like that, I'll definitely hold off for a little while, a few months at the very least, until they can iron out all the wrinkles they're going to have with various bugs and issues. Um, so yeah, it's entirely up to you. I personally, I'm not going to upgrade my laptop anytime soon. I'm going to wait a few months before even venturing into it because I don't really want to have to revert back to Windows 8 and risk knackering my operating system just to see if Windows 10 is any good. I have had a developer's preview at work and yeah, it did look okay. I'm not gonna slate it and say it's awful. It's an it's an improvement on Windows 8, I believe, but anything new that comes out, there's always gonna be issues, bugs, lagging, crashing, driver fix errors and stuff like that. So go and have a look for yourself. But yeah, personally, I'd avoid Windows 10 for, for some time to come and uh, that's how I told you so.